Okay, this has to do with the, and y'all excuse my pronunciation, but halogenin, boy, help me out here. Uh, okay. I'm on uh, page 356. Halogenated refrigerants, meaning chlorine, fluorine, bro bro bromine, iodine, and uh, the last one is instantine. Like I say, I'm not real good with the pronunciations of these. This is uh, more in my, my thoughts of chemistry, which I didn't do very well with in high school or anywhere else, but it's part of what we need to know. And it does have to do with the CFC refrigerants, HCFC refrigerants, HFC refrigerants. But let's talk a little bit about what we see there. Cereotropes is one of the types of refrigerants. Now, that is uh, a refrigerant that, Ricky, help me out there. Is that is that one that uh, is does not split, uh, break down, is not a blend? Is that correct? Right, that's my understanding, David. Azeotrope is the refrigerant that um, it it's a blend, but it acts like a pure refrigerant. No temperature glide, no fractionation. Zeotropic blends has temperature glide and fractionation. I always get lost on that, and even if I just had read over it, I have to go back and refresh myself on it. But I can understand the refrigerants that don't break down because what happens when I say break down? They're, they're one refrigerant. They're going to act like one refrigerant. They don't break apart. They're always going to have the same pressure-temperature relation. When it gets into blends, that's when you have two or more refrigerants that have been put together. Now, this is not something that we do in the field. This is, this is the way you get it from the uh, manufacturer. But it has two or more refrigerants in there, and they will actually have what they call a bubble and dew point. It's a little bit different. That difference between the bubble and dew point is called the glide. Now, what that means is, is it still has the characteristics of the two separate refrigerants, but still acts like a new refrigerant. I know that's confusing, and it is and has been for me for many, many years. But in doing so, you may actually have what's called fractionization, and that's the point where you may actually have a leak in the system and leak out more of one refrigerant than you do the other. Well, they say that that you would have to have a major leak many, many times before that would become a problem. And I can sort of see that, but I also have something in my mind that says if it's supposed to be a per certain percentage, then it needs to stay that certain percentage. The bottom line is, is in charging these refrigerants, you need to charge them into the system as a liquid, not as a vapor, because if you charge them out of the can as a vapor, you're going to get more of one refrigerant than you do the others. That's the biggest thing that I know as a service technician that we need to be aware of. Okay. Um, one of the <clears throat> things that I think we need to put a lot of emphasis on is safety. When it comes to the safety of the refrigerants, <clears throat> we want to make sure that we have a well ventilated area where we're working. Now, refrigerants displace the air. Most refrigerants are heavier than air. If you're working in a place that has, uh, is, is concealed, okay, you're thinking, well, I, I'm not going to be in a concealed space. What if you're in a walk-in cooler? And even though you may have the door open, there may not be enough <clears throat> air moving in and out of that particular room to get rid of any of the refrigerant that may be accumulating in there. Now, here's another thing. If you crank up a torch, and you start heating up the pipe or even burning the refrigerant in the air, then you're making a poisonous gas. Now, I know you're going to say, well, if I smell that, I'm going to get out of there. Okay, but I just got just a couple more minutes of work to do before I need to go. Y'all been there. You know what I'm talking about. You're going to push it to the limit because you want to get the job done. Well, don't do it. Get some ventilation going, okay? Uh, 
most all refrigerants, like I said, will displace the oxygen, and or not oxygen, but the air. So make sure you do have some good ventilated areas that you're working in. Now we don't have to deal with the flammability of the refrigerants in most cases, but keep in mind some refrigerants do become flammable and explosive at certain under certain conditions. Treat it as that. If you treat the refrigerants as they do have a possibility of being flammable, you're going to be a whole lot better off. Propane is used as a refrigerant, sometimes as an additive to the refrigerants. It helps to return or, or allow the oil to, to flow through the system. Some refrigerants don't do very well with the, with the oil, so if they add a little propane, it helps out. It helps to, that refrigerant, to, I mean, that, that oil to be returned back. So keep that in mind. You may actually be dealing with something that normally would not be explosive or flammable, but in certain conditions it could be. Um, toxicity. Most of the refrigerants that we deal with will not fall into that category, although there is one that is quite common if you work with low pressure systems. That's 123, R123. It does have a toxicity rating of, uh, uh, what is it, uh, I think it's a B is what it is. Most of the refrigerants that you will deal with will fall up under what's called an A1, meaning that they're not toxic, under normal conditions, they're not flammable, and uh, they're pretty well safe. But there again, they do displace oxygen or, or air. Well, there is one thing I, w I can guarantee you that most refrigerants will do. They will burn you through frost, frostbite. If you've never had a cold burn, um, I, I have, and I don't know that I can tell you that it's any difference between coal burn and being burnt with a flame. I had one of them too. You, you've had that to happen. And, you know, we, we, we try to teach safety here and we try to do things safely, but things do happen. And I had a student, he was in his first, first uh, term, he was out in the field, on the job, and he had a refrigerant hose to get stuck. Well, his thoughts was to get that hose off of there regardless. I felt so sorry for the guy because when he come in here, he had water blisters all over his hands between his fingers and everything. That was R22. Now, R22 boils at about minus 44 degrees when it hits the atmosphere. 